Welcome back to Storm Knight with Storm Knight's Gaming. We're storming into another build video. This is my Magic of Dragonite build video. I'm going to show you what I've been running in the recent patch. Hopefully with update 31, things will get a little bit better for the Mag Magic of Dragonite than it has in the past. Getting right into it. We're going to go to the character sheet. Running 64 in Max Magica. Got about 29.8k Max Mag. 30.1 Max Health. 20.3 max stamp 1200 magicka recovery our spell damage we're not too worried about but it does ramp up a little bit we're mainly shooting for penetration on this build that's how most magicka dragonites are running at the moment atronach munda stone we are stage 3 vampire and we are a breton getting into these skills on our front bar, we're on an elemental drain, engulfing flames, 10% damage increase, flames of oblivion. If you want to make this cauterize, go ahead. I like the extra damage though, really helps in the middle of X's. Burning embers, flame lash. I, I just, I like flame lash way better than. Molten Whip. I know some Magic Dragonites are running Molten Whip, but how hard people are hitting, you just need the extra heals right now. Ferocious Sleep. Leaps on both the Stamina and Magicka side are bugged at the moment. Next patch, we're going to be getting the Morph of Corrosive Armor, affecting Offensive Pin in general. So, on Update 31, Corrosive Armor is coming back. It's going on a Magic of Dragonite, boys. It's going to be thick. If you want for your offensive ult, you can run Shooting Star. Or your next option would be Shifting Standard. Reduces their healing down 16%. There's a lot of heals floating around, especially if you're in a group. And you can just move this around someone slaps a synergy on it like it can add up to a lot of damage a lot of people stay stacked up this patch i don't know why but like they'll just group up on a standard like it doesn't do anything and they melt and then you get hate messages back bar running volatile armor burning talons if you're running in a group on a constant basis, you might want to debate on putting this as the Choking Talons morph, just for the minor maim. I ran both, and I could notice the damage decrease on myself, but I could also see how much tankier I was being with it on. Elusive Mist. This is bugged on and off. Especially in high time in Cyrodiil. So, if you want to run Race Against Time, go ahead. Deep Breath. Deep Breath is hitting super hard this patch. I would definitely suggest running this or the other morph, Draw Essence, if you're having mag sustain issues. I put it on and haven't looked back. Like, it's amazing. Coagulating Blood, we got a huge buff to this. Huge buff. And it's awesome. Like, it's hitting about like Breath of Life to do right now. Bear in mind, you're only going to get that big heal if you're at, you know, 40, 30% health, some odd. So you really want to kind of sit on it for a little bit. But as soon as you hit 40, 30% health and you pop this, oh my lord. You're going to just see your health shoot up. Swarming Scion, I've been running this more solo. Um, again, if you want to run Leap and you don't feel like running Scion, you can run Shifting Standard or the other one, the Meteor. I personally like running this just because when you're getting Zerg down and you get that big health increase and all the damage done, you can see people through walls that's pretty cool really threw me for a loop because I'd never played a vampire build and 
It was just a new take on Magicka Dragonite. It doesn't exactly feel like the old swarming bats, but it'll do. Getting into our consumables, the Witch Sugar Skulls, again. We are running Alliance Spell Draughts, you know, Spell Power Potions in general, and Tri Potions. This isn't that much of a spell damage build. If you want to drop one of those back bar skills for a spell power increase, go ahead. Just know you're going to be gipping yourself in a certain area. Like whether it be your snare removal or area damage. We are running double dot poisons. You can instantly see the stam increase from these constantly procking off. Getting into the gear. Vatistrans perfecting Inferno Staff. You knew it was coming. Been ran for a couple patches. It is sharpened. Your only other uh, option would be to run Heartlands. Heartland Sharpen Staff or a Maul. I've ran a Maul as well. Sharpen Maul works amazing as well. And the medium weak combo whenever you off balance somebody to get them into that stun feels super good. Not even counting the resource regen off of it. But I stuck with this. I had more success with this. But definitely if you're wanting more damage, go with the Maul and Heartlands. For the two-piece, it gives you Spell Pin, 1190. Whenever you cast Elemental Drain on somebody, within 15 meters of you, cause a surge of energy for the next 10 seconds. The uh, enemy takes 1,000 Flame, Shock, or Frost damage every second, which increases by 1% each time it deals damage up to 20%. can occur every 10 seconds, scales off your weapon and spell damage. So yeah, it's hitting hard still. It did get a little bit of a nerf. You still notice it though. People still notice it. Our red and potates back bar. Uh, still needing to trait train to some of these. Transmutes are hard to come by with all these builds. I would probably run this powered if not defending. I think I'm kind of like a powered though. But it reduces the damage taken from players by 3%. Reduces the cost of your ultimate abilities by 15%. Bear in mind, this is only active on our back bar. Both the 2 and 3 piece. So, our Scion is getting reduced by 15%. Our standard if we run it on that bar. 15% reduction. It's pretty nice. Like, I was thoroughly surprised with it. Blood Spawn. This is a 3 heavy, 1 medium, 3 light build. Running tri stats, still trying to put some on here. You kind of want to shoot for 330, the rest of them M10. Um, we're all running Pariah and Trainee. Pariah, I feel like, is a really good go to right now. Um, if you were running in a group, you could probably get away with Data or Trickery on this, but the way mag DKs have to rely on their dots, I feel like you're having to set up too much and you really need Pariah. We are running two mag reduction, one spell damage infused. This one's going to be a bloodthirsty as well, like I said, still working on some. Getting the 16% damage increase off Malakath. If you don't want to run Malakath, again, you know, you can run like Heartlands or something like that. Which, Heartlands is going to give you. See if I got one on me. Mm, there it is. Gives you spell damage, max mag, max stam. Increases the effectiveness of your weapon trait by 100%. So your sharpen trait is doubling. And if say you got a defensive bar like Heartland's Conquer Staff, 
the 8% turns into 16% increased healing done. If you got defending, you know, that's doubled. So, it's super nice to have. But, your choice. Getting into our champion points. Blue tree, got blessed. The max mag, unassailable, area of effect, uh, damage reduction. I noticed this with all the necros and wardens floating around instantly. These swings are hurting, especially when Stam Sorks hit you right now, so Dulles rebuff, very noticeable. If you feel like you want to drop off some damage and you're running in a group, you can run the Grit Resistance star. I felt like I didn't really want to run that just because I was losing so much damage. Got the Flawless Ritual, War Mage, Offensive Penetration. Fighting Aura increases your damage done with AoE attacks. This affects Deep Breath, Dragon Leap, your standard Swarming Scion. Affects it all. This will probably get changed whenever Corrosive Armor becomes a thing. Mastered Arms, increased damage done with direct damage attacks by 2% per stage. You had the points. You could probably shoot for Thermoturge, but I do not. Um, single target attacks. The only thing this will really affect would be Dragon Leap or your Whip. So, or the initial damage off your Burning Embers. You're not really much use in running Deadly Aim currently. If you're running a Molten Whip build full light armor like with Heartlands and you were just trying to nuke people, yeah, go ahead. But we're super tanky, so we're running the direct damage and the AoE. Red Tree, running Survival Instincts. Again, you're going to really notice all the status effects that get applied to you. Especially being on Magic of Dragonite. It's super rough. So, having that cost reduction is pretty much needed. And it's a night and day difference whenever you have it on and whenever you don't. Juggernaut. Amazing star that I just started using. Used it on my Stamina Dragonite and never looked back. So, I slapped it on this one as well. Rejuvenation, a little bit of health, magic, and stam recovery. The magic re recovery we really need. A little bit of extra armor on us. We are in three light and three heavy, but we still need that. A little bit of extra armor. If you want, you can run the Boundless Vitality for the extra health, but I didn't really see the use in it compared to these two. Running Gifted Rider, 10% mount speed increase. Rationer, 30 minute increase to your food. Liquid efficiency, 10% chance not to consume your poison or your potion. Pretty noticeable, I feel like it's higher than what it is. Just saying. Then your fourth one, you can have whatever you want, whether it be the resource nodes or the weapon. In no, I thought that one was a star. You know, just pick your four star. Whatever you want. There's not many others. Warm out might be a good one. I think that's it. Hit that like.